Alright, so I messed up on the video, so now I have to go back. I think this is where we left off. So now we are at I or whatever. Um which is F of X plus H um minus wait. Yes. F of X over H. And you're gonna let zero or H approach zero, which what that is is taking the limit. And I'm really surprised this wonder didn't write it like that last class because that's what it is and should have. So what you're doing is you're taking the limit, lim, or no, fine, as h approaches zero, okay, of this function. So if you look at it right here, if you would plug in h right now as zero, you would divide by zero and the whole universe would explode. You all read the book, hopefully. So, what you have to do is you have to work this out, which we did before in B, and you get this. And here, if you plug in 0 into H, nothing happens, right? So, if you plug in 0 into H, you get 8x plus 3, f prime of x. Alright? That's your derivative. That is the rate of the function, or whatever, okay? That is your derivative. There's no more h's h. This is still the derivative, but you gotta define h, and that won't be right if you just write that. So this, if there's no more h's inside of it, that is the actual derivative or rate. So now, oh yeah, this is crap. Now the second part of this, I messed up on this in the first try of this video because it's really stupid. You plug in one. I am really not sure why they make you. This. I didn't have to do this back in last year. So, um, well, do the thing. Your original function is f of x equals 2x plus 3 squared. Right? Yeah. So now, f of 1, let me use my colors again plug in 1 into x, right? It's like, remember when you say f of x equals x, f of 1 equals 1, right? Remember that, not 1? So, okay, so f of 1 is the same thing as 2 times 1 plus 3 squared, which is 2 plus 3 is 5, squared is 25. So, you can just say 25. Now, f of 1 plus h is the same thing as plugging this into this. So, remember what I did before when I did the h? So now there's no more x. You're plugging this into here. So you get 2 times 1 plus h. Damn it. Um, plus 3 squared. Oh man, am I? More algebra. Alright, so again, 2 plus 2h plus 3, which is the same thing. Oh, I thought that's hard, never mind. 2h plus 5 squared, both things. Which is again just simple foiling. 4h squared plus um, 20h plus 25. Alright? That is f prime of uh, 1 plus h. Or not yet, not yet, my bad. You have to, you have to take the limit. So you're still taking the limit. Oh yeah, Cronin used to do this, and I always remember why he always writing that limit. You have to always take the limit. Until you take the limit, this limit thing does not go away. H into zero. Limit of H into zero. There's a, there's a, like, stool behind me, so I can't move. 
of h is 0, 5. So now I'm going to continue over here. Actually, over here. <laughs> so I'm just going to copy the last line I wrote. Limit of h into 0 of function f of h squared, or f of h squared, plus 20h plus 25. And now if you plug in 0, you get 25. Alright. Or no more limit, my bad. So f prime of um, 1 plus h equals 25. Um, yeah. Oh shit, I shouldn't have taken the limit. My bad, back up, back up. This is your right answer. Forget this, what I did up here. Forget this. Ah, I forgot, you have to, you have to put this into the function. My bad, this is the green part. Right, right here. This is this green part. I took the limit of it, and I shouldn't have. Okay, my bad on that. So, what you really do is, you write this out. So you take the limit. Let me actually substitute it in. Right here. Um, 4h squared plus 20h plus 25 minus this big, this is still the green part. And uh, this is the red part. And you divide that by h. So, 4h squared plus 20h plus 25 minus 25 over h. Plus 25 minus 25 cancels. 4h squared plus 20h over h is the same thing as 4h plus 20. Because h cancel, right? That is your answer. That is the, that is the limit of when h approaches to 0 of this function, which is f prime of 1 plus h equals all right that is your final answer for f2 I'm glad there's a lot of boxes this is your answer and I messed up a little bit and I'm moving across the board my whiteboard is simply not big enough for this so this is a more um, involved problem problem as you would call it By the way, I should study for my math test. Shit. Oh crap, my book. What page was it? Shit, 419? Nope. Okay. Bye, <laughs> information to obtain D1 and D2. Oh! Okay, I'll explain this throughout the video, but um, let me go about D2. Alright. Okay, D1, you found right this. This is good. If you write this, trust me. Just do it. You obtain the limit of when H approaches zero of the function, right of the function, of the function, or um, don't write up the same, right? You take the limit. Take the okay, limit of the function um, with write d1 uh, f of x plus 1 or h minus f of x over h. Um, to find the um, rate for derivative bonus points, trust me, 
um, of f of x, which is 2x plus 3 squared. All right. So what I just wrote here, um, the limit, remember what I said before, is the formal way of finding a derivative. Later on, you're going to find a way that is much easier to find derivatives and much quicker. You will, this problem will literally take you two seconds. Like, I'm serious. And, um, yeah, taking the limit is the long way. And you took the limit of this function, which with, with, when you take the limit of that function, you find the derivative of this function. That's how it works. All right. And um, now, 2di or double i, I don't know. I think, hold up, no, no. Go, I don't want cookies. Um, yeah, it's a tangent line. Um, it's a tangent line at x equals 1. Okay, um, so x, um, um, you, uh, me, two, uh, you find the tangent line at x equals one. Uh, yeah. You find the tangent line of x equals one, which gives you the slope of the function. Like, okay, imagine this is your function, which you have in C, and when you put the derivative, you had a function that would give you the tangent line at any point you wanted it to be. So you plugged in any number into your x of the derivative, and it gave you the tangent line of that. This was x was 1, this is your tangent line. If x is 2, this is your tangent line, and so on. Okay? So when you, when you did this example, it gave you a tangent line at x equals 1. All right? If you don't understand this, don't worry about it. We will have another class on this probably. And um, you can always come to me and ask, and I will try to explain this a little better. But um, yeah, that's problem four. And now I have to write it myself. Great. Okay. Peace.